Okay. So there is this one comment or misconception I'm seeing over and over again. And it's the kind of thing you say when you know a few things about music, but not enough to see the full picture. And it's definitely not a dumb comment, not at all. It's understandable and I know where it comes from, but it's not right and it's dangerous. Well, it's not really dangerous, but the thought alone is very limiting in many, many ways. So today is the day I'm clearing things up and later in this video, I'll even show you some cool examples of how you can break out of that limiting idea. So here it is. Recently I made a video of some chords Paul Simon used in one of his songs and we started out very basic with the following chords. E minor, D, C, and B. Clearly a chord progression in the key of E minor, right? But there were a handful of comments. Would it not normally be B minor in the key of E minor? How can B be in the key of E minor? I'm not a music theorist, but in E minor isn't B minor the fifth, not B. Theory noob here. The progression is in E minor, right? It's E, D, C, B. Shouldn't the B be minor, not major? And hmm, indeed, if you play the E minor scale, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D, and E, that B major chord doesn't really fit in with that D note. So I guess these comments are legit then. B major isn't in the key of E minor. Well, wait a second. So as said, you can turn any basic major or minor scale into chords by using the notes from that particular scale. If we did that for G major or E minor, uh, the outcome is the same since there are a relative keys as we would like to say it. The outcome is as follows. So the scale is of G major is G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, and G. And if we turn those notes into chords, using just the notes from the scale, we get G major, A minor, B minor, C major, D major, E minor, F sharp diminished, and G again. So now each chord we're playing, but also each separate note found in the chords are coming just from the G major or the E minor scale, no exceptions. And there's even a word for that, diatonic. The chords and the notes of what you're playing are only those from the scale you're playing in. So then back to the example, E minor, D, C, B. The B major wasn't on your list, so apparently it isn't diatonic, but is or isn't it in the key of E minor? Help me out here, please. Okay, let's get to the heart of it. We should ask ourselves the question, what is a key anyway? When they say the piece is in the key of E minor, what does it mean really? And the easiest explanation would be, the key is the place that feels or sounds like home. The chord that feels like home, the tonic, the center of gravity of things. And in 99% of the songs, it's actually pretty clear Usually it's even the chord the piece starts or ends with. So now let's circle back to E minor, D, C, and B. There's absolutely no misconception about what chord feels like home, right? The key is clearly E minor. We knew that already. This just doesn't bring us closer to the answer. Get to the point. Wait, did you put me on pause? And please don't shout because it actually did bring us closer to the answer because now we can make a distinction between the scale of E minor and the key of E minor. Because that's really the key to do this video. Wait, that is funny. Ah, maybe it's just me. So why people think B major isn't found in the key of E minor is because the note making the B chord major, the D sharp over here, <laughs> is not found in the scale of E natural minor. It's actually from the E harmonic minor scale, but we don't officially see that as a diatonic scale since the one and a half step over here. But anyway, we're diverging. If you want to play diatonic, we need to turn the D sharp into a D, making the B chord indeed minor. So now we're playing diatonic, E minor, D, C, B minor, fantastic, but I mean, why would you want that? Why would the goal be to play diatonic? Well, here's the thing, people often confuse the scale with the key. The scale is just a set of notes. 
the key talks about the home court really and maybe also what to expect i guess i mean we definitely see a lot of diatonic chords but it's not unusual to have some chromaticism modal interchange non-diatonic stuff it, we can all add it and we could still be playing in one key so it doesn't mean we're changing keys all the time we have a chord maybe not found in the scale sometimes we can definitely but we need drastic stuff to use the word key change or modulation same thing in a song we really need to feel a new home chord for that to happen so when we look at that b chord in e minor it sounds beautiful in the key of e minor if anything i guess that the five chord usually is major more often than not anyways, because it just sounds way better as a major chord in a minor key. Besides, nobody would ever say you should do this or you should do that. Music theory isn't about what rules to follow. It's there to describe the music and knowing just a little bit is very cool. Don't get me wrong, but it can also be confusing because you don't see the big picture yet. So check this out. So we all learn music in a different way and usually explaining what chords fit in a certain key is a good way to get started. In the key of C, the following chords will sound good because they are all made up of the notes from the C major scale. C, D minor, E minor, F major, G, A minor, B diminished, and C again. The 1, 4, 5 are major, the 2, 3 and 6 are minor, the 7 is diminished. This is the harmonized major scale and yes, we very often see songs made up with just these chords uh, or, or even just the 4, the, the typical 4 chord song. But again, nobody tells us we have to stick to these diatonic chords to make the progression work. If anything, beauty is often found when we play non-diatonic chords. For example, this example. This sounds pretty sweet, right? Well, most chords we're playing actually are really outside the C major scale, the E7, the F minor, the A flat, the B flat, but still, that C major chord feels like home to us. So we can say the chord progression is still in the key of C major. So why all of this sounds good is probably a, another topic for another video. And I made a few videos that really are linked close together to this. So if you are interested in that, I'll link those below. But we're using techniques like modal interchange or pick chords from parallel keys really, secondary dominance, chromatic medians and so on. But what about this little turnaround in the key of C? It's it's like three chords totally outside of C major. E flat major seventh, A flat major seventh, and D flat major seventh. But still, it lands beautifully on the C major. So these comments really make a lot of sense and I do understand where they're coming from. And whenever I read them, I always feel like answering them because opening your mind and not limiting yourself to just a major scale or just a minor scale, you know, it, 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 yeah, it can really help you out so much. So you can really add any chord, any note to the key of C major and still be playing in the key of C major. It's non-diatonic and that's good to know because you would play differently over it if you were to improvise or sing a melody for example uh, the b major chord we can use e harmonic minor over that b chord and that's good to know but i guess that's a topic for another video uh, if you'd be interested just let me know in the comment section and also what i love to hear from you is like what are your favorite non-diatonic chords like in the key of c What's your favorite thing to play uh, other than the diatonic chords, of course? I want to learn about that. It could be fun to see. Anyway, I hope this clears things up a bit. And if so, please gently reach for that like button to show some support. And don't feel scared or limited by things you may see as rules. Really, there are no rules, not in music. And I guess that's what makes it so beautiful. Anyway, have a lovely day. Cheers.